pleasant night to all those that are out there in Facebook land. Tonight is indeed another wonderful privilege that we have to come from our home to your home tonight. And we pray that you are locked on and um, ready for the studying of the Word of God with us tonight. Um, as you're aware, tonight it is by the studies. It is um, a time when we come together and reason from the Word of God. My wife is just right in the background tonight. Um, um, she will be there propping in the in the back. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, but I want each of you to be a part of and to join in with us as we study um, the Word of God together. Um, we are looking at um, astrology. We are looking at the plans of God. Um, we are looking at prophetically what um, we are experiencing now and uh, prophetically what um, is soon to follow. You know, um, we know that um, we are in a time of birth pangs. We are in a time of um, shaking and God is doing something to bring about something. But it's important that we understand the plans of God and we can only understand the plans of God if we study the word of God. So tonight we will want to go in to um, continue studying the rapture of the church, the second coming of Christ, um, where we are now and where um, it will be, you know, um, in the nearest future. We don't know the minute nor the hour, but one of the things that we know, it is that the only major prophecy that we are looking for right now, nothing to follow it other than all that which is already followed or all the prophecies that are already fulfilled. The major, only major prophecy that we are looking for right now, it is the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church. And uh, um, it is important, you know, last week we would have shared with you, it is important for us to um, be ready. You know, one um, scripture we saw, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said that we must be accounted worthy to escape that which is about to come upon the world. And uh, being accounted worthy, on our last study, we would have discussed um, qualifications. Um, what will qualify you to be a participant of those who will be transported from this place before a um, major destruction begin to take place. I know that, praise the name of the Lord, that there is a lot of concerns and the concerns in relation. Some people wonder if we are in the great tribulation with what is happening internationally now. I'm saying to you, no, we are not in the great tribulation. We are experiencing tribulation. We are experiencing birth pangs. We are experiencing a shaking like we have never seen before, which I believe will climax into the heavier shaking. I don't believe and I don't expect things to become better with the system of the world, you know, but believers, what is important, it is for us to be ready. But before we get into the word of God, I just want you to bow your hearts with me in prayer. Father in heaven, dear Lord, we give you praise and thanks, honor and glory. We thank you, the Lord, for your loving kindness, for your goodness. We thank you, the Lord, and God, Father, for your promises. And we know that all your promises, they are here and amen. Holy Father, as we come by here to study your word, Father God, you said a study to show ourselves a proof unto you. A workman needed not be ashamed, but to rightly divide the words of truth. Father God, I pray the Lord, the God, Father, Almighty God, for receptive hearts. I pray the Lord that heirs of God, Father, that a death will be unstopped. And Almighty God, I pray, O oh God, that your people will receive your word. And Father, O oh God, that they will be blessed on tonight. Be glorified among us. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. There's a little song that is on my heart, and I would like you to sing that song with me. It is a song that I have not heard for a while, but I would like you to sing along with me, sing that song with me, and that is what a day that will be. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we get into the word of God, we will sing that song together. What a day that will be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's coming a day. When the higher things shall come, no more clouds in the sky. your holy name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a day. A glorious day that will be. Hallelujah. That day when he will take us by our hands and lead us through the promised land. What a glorious day that will be. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We would like to discuss some deep things tonight. And in discussing some deep things tonight, praise the name of the Lord. I hope that you are ready for it. I hope that your spirits are being open. Praise the name of the Lord. And don't close that door. Don't close your spirit until you receive all that God have for you tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, on last week, I know we looked at qualification for the rapture. But we would have discussed with you, praise the name of the Lord, that the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or the second advent, we discussed with you that it is not the rapture of the church. And uh, praise the name of the Lord, we discuss with you also what the rapture of the church is all about. But it's important to know that the first coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the first time that he came to it to live here and to fulfill a mission. We discussed that with you um, some time ago. And um, we also shared with you that this would have happened about two or over 2,000 years ago when Jesus died for the sins of men. 
but the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will occur when he literally comes again to live on the earth to fulfill another mission. To reign also as king of the whole earth and to put down all rebellions. Praise the Lord. So my God, so the first coming, the first time he came would have been when he came to save mankind from sin. Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, his second coming, hallelujah, will be when he will come back again to the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. And he will be coming back literally to the earth to fulfill another mission to reign as king of the whole earth and to put down all rebellions. To put down all rebellions. So we would have gone through some of those things with you. But tonight what we want, would like to look at it is we would like to look at the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we want to look at the second coming, that the rapture of the church. As we said to you, as we taught you, that the rapture of the church, it is where he will come in the, the air and uh, praise the name of the Lord. The dead in Christ will be risen from the grave and they will be called up to meet him in the air. And we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them and we shall be forever with him as we go, hallelujah, to that place that Jesus had promised us when he said, In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. He said, I am going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Praise the Lord. So praise the name of the Lord. That would have been, hallelujah, the, the, the rapture of the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. My God. And the rapture of the church and the church age. So the church age is being completed or ended at the rapture of the church. Praise the name of the Lord. That is the end of the church age. Praise the name of the Lord. When the church is being raptured. Praise the name of the Lord. But tonight, we would like to look at his second coming. Praise the name of the Lord. And in looking at his second coming, which when he comes, he will then place his feet once more on the earth, on the Mount of Olive. Praise the name of the Lord. His second coming. Praise the Lord. We would like to look at that tonight. But the second coming will be at least seven years after the rapture of the church. So the second coming of Christ will be, or the second coming of Christ is at least, and I said at least, seven years after the rapture. When Christ will literally, or when Christ literally lands on the earth, to live among men as he did at his first advent. Praise the Lord. So his second coming will be when he will literally come to the earth. My God, not in the air for the church to be raptured, but he will be literally coming to the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And he will, oh, he will be literally landing on the earth to live among men as he did at his first advent. As he did at his first advent when he came to save men. The Bible teaches at his first, at his first advent. The Bible teaches when the fullness of time came. God had sent his son to live among us. For the Bible teaches you know that um, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word was made flesh. And it dwelt among men. And, and we know praise the name of the Lord. We quote those scriptures over and over. So that would have been his first advent. But the second advent. It is when he literally land back on the earth to live among men, praise the name of the Lord, and to set up the kingdom of God. But we want to look at some scriptures tonight, and we would like to discuss some scriptures tonight. I hope that you have your Bibles with you, praise the name of the Lord. Remember, you are in Bible class, you are in Bible studies, 
and not um, being in the building should be no excuse for you not having your Bible because we are in church. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are still having church. Praise the name of the Lord. So I hope that you have your Bibles with me, with, with you. So take out your Bibles with me. With, take out your Bibles now. If you have your Bibles with you, I want to see some amen. If you have your Bibles, I want to see some amen. I want some amen there before we continue the word of God. Because hallelujah, I have no intention of speaking to you my word or words from some other book. But it must be from the Bible. Let me see some amen there. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You have your Bible, say amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm seeing some amen coming up there. Praise the name of the Lord. It means you have your Bibles with you. So if you have your Bibles with you, then turn with me to Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14, we are looking at the second advent, which is the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. After the rapture of the church, we said to you that um, that will take place approximately seven years after the rapture of the church. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are looking in Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 14 and verses, Zechariah 14 and verses and verses um, 4 and 5. Zechariah 14 verses 4 and 5. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You have Zechariah 14 verses 8 and 5. I'm seeing some amen there. So we'll read from Zechariah chapter 14 verses 4 and 5. The Bible reads there, And his feet shall stand in the day. And his feet shall stand in the day upon the Mount of Olives. And this is speaking about the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What is going to happen? And his feet, the prophet Zechariah is saying here, And his feet shall stand in the day upon the Mount of Olives, which uh, upon stand in, the, in that day, sorry, upon in that day, sorry, upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olive shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the, towards, towards the east and towards the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And there shall be a very great valley. So what the Bible is saying here, it is that the Mount of Olive is going to split, my God, to the east. And one side is going to split to the west, and there will be a great valley in the midst of the Mount of Olives. So you're seeing here something, my God, you're seeing here something, and it's important, praise the name of the Lord, to take note of that. You're seeing something that is happening here that is so significant that the Mount of Olives will be split towards the east and towards the west. And if we go on, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall be moved towards the north, and half of it towards the south. Half of the mountain shall move towards, half towards the, the north, and half towards the south. So you are seen a mountain when Jesus had your step on the Mount of Olives, you are seeing the mountain here split in two. And verses 5 read, and he shall flee to the valleys of the mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Shall reach unto Azel. Yea, he shall flee. Like as he flee from before the... Like, 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 like as he flee from before the earthquakes in the day of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord... And the Lord, my God, shall come, shall come, and all the saints with him. And all the saints with thee. So we are seeing here that the, the prophet Zechariah is saying, hallelujah, that when Jesus comes the, and he places his feet upon the Mount of Olives at the second advent or at the second coming, that that mountain will be split in two and there will be a great valley in that mountain. There will be a great valley in that mountain. But 
the prophet also said that it will be a time like what happened uh, that what happened at the time of, of of that king and that king Uzziah and Uzziah of Judea and you will see that in somewhere in Amos um, and he would have been referring to to Amos chapter 1 and verses 1. Praise the name of the Lord. My God, you can go there if you so desire. And the, let, let, me, let me let me show and um, point. I think it's important that I I take you there so that you will know what um, the prophet Zechariah was referring to. An earthquake that took place, but he was saying there that it will be like that earthquake. But my God, the, it will be like it, but it will be, my God, more terrible than that earthquake in the time of Uzziah, the king of Judah. If you look at Amos chapter 1 and verses 1, Amos 1 and verses 1, i just taking you there so that you will um, know what Zechariah was referring to. Um, if you look at Amos 1 and verses 1, the Bible said, and the, word of, and the words of Amos, who was among the, who was among the head, the head man of Tekoa, of, of, Tic, of Tico, uh, sorry, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of the son of, of Josh, king of Israel, Josh, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. So you're seeing here, Amos is referring to the same earthquake earthquake that um, Zechariah um, made reference to when he said when Jesus comes and places his feet upon the Mount of Olive that it will be an earthquake like that earthquake. My God it will be a time or an earthquake like man has never seen before. Praise the name of the Lord. Now we are looking at the second coming of Christ but I want you to look at me in Daniel also Chapter 2, verses 44 and 45. Daniel chapter 2, verses 44 and 45. You have your Bibles with you. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Turn your Bibles to the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verses 44 and 45. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. If you have it, say amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You have it, say amen. That is Daniel. Chapter 2, verses 44 to 45. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have it, say amen. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Now I'm reading from Daniel chapter 2, verses 44. I'm seeing that amen there. Praise the name of the Lord. Daniel chapter 2, verses 44. And the Bible reads here, And in the days of these kings, Shall the God in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all those kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So Daniel is prophesying here that a time is going to come in the last days when God is going to set up a kingdom. But let us look, praise the name of the Lord, before I elaborate on that a bit. If you look at 45, Daniel went on to say, For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron and the brass and the clay and the silver and the gold and the great God, sorry, and the gold. He said the great God had made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter and the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof is sure. So we are seeing here, Daniel is referring to a kingdom that will destroy all other kingdoms. A hand that 
My God, and you, you see, praise the name of the Lord, that what Daniel said in verses 45, he said, And in the day of these kings shall the God of heaven set up the kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to, to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all other kingdoms. It shall break and consume all other kingdoms. So what Daniel is saying here, it is that before the kingdom of God or before Christ comes back the second time to, to set up the kingdom of God on the earth, that kingdom that will not be destroyed, that kingdom that will, will last forever, God is is going to make sure that all other kingdoms is being broken. And what does this mean? I want you to understand, we talk about superpowers. We talk about superpowers like China and the United States of America and Russia. I want you to know that all these superpowers, they are being built on systems. And the before the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ set up his kingdom on the earth, all these kingdoms must be destroyed. And this is one of the signs that we are seeing right now. One of the signs that we are seeing right now, it is the systems of the world. We see it started in China. We see it hit the United States of America and China is still going through it. The United States of America is still going through it. You're not hearing much about Russia because they don't give out much information and you're seeing what is happening in all the kingdoms of the world. Mm -hmm. You're seeing, my God, that the economy is crashing in on them. Mm -hmm. You're seeing, my God, that the gods of the world, God is humbling the gods of the world. Mm -hmm. We are seeing, my God, mm -hmm. you're seeing that, that, that um, entertainment is shut down. Mm -hmm. You're seeing Hollywood mm -hmm. is being shut down. All mm -hmm. the Hollywood stars, they are now locked in their homes. Mm -hmm. My God, they have no control of that. God is in control. God is in charge. You're seeing that the system of traveling for the world, my God, borders have been closed. You're seeing, my God, the system of medicine. My God, it is also crumbled that they don't know if at all they will ever be able to get a vaccine to be able, my God, to subdue this thing. I want you to understand the systems of the world, the kingdoms of the world is crumbling. And why? Because the kingdom of this world must become the kingdom of our God. Praise the Lord. Are you with me tonight? Praise the Lord. And the praise the name of the Lord. So, so Daniel is saying there that a kingdom will be set up. And he said, hallelujah, it shall break in pieces and consume all the other kingdoms. And the kingdom that will be set up when Jesus comes back, hallelujah, the second time on this earth, that kingdom will be set up. It will be a kingdom that will stand forever. Daniel said it will stand forever. It means, praise the name of the Lord, there will be no other kingdom that will be able to destroy that kingdom and my God I want you to understand my God the kingdom of the world right now the kingdom of the world right now is such an unjust kingdom you have one sometimes you have one person one person is a, a movie star or one person is a singer and my God they are billionaires and you have people hungry don't have food it's okay for people to become billionaires but my God I want you to understand the kingdom that God is going to set up there will be equity it will be a, a theorocracy a theorocracy Theotocracy kingdom, it means praise the name of the Lord. God is going to rule, hallelujah, and God will be in charge, and there will be fairness across the board. Theocracy, praise the name of the Lord. God, hallelujah, He will be in control, hallelujah, praise the Lord. So, 
Daniel said that this kingdom is going to destroy all other kingdoms. Praise the name of the Lord. All other kingdoms, all other systems will be destroyed as we are seeing right now. That all other, um, the system of the world is being suspended. My God, and the, 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 the governments of the world, they don't know when things, or if things will ever um, come back um, to normal. There will be a new norms. And my God, not the same norms, but there will be a new norm the world will not be the same again after all of this and somebody as I said to you that we are experiencing birth pangs and these birth pangs is leading up to the birthing of something these birth pangs is leading up to when the kingdom of God will be birthed upon the earth but I want you to understand that these birth pangs it will increase because labor have to be increased for that child to be birthed it. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So don't believe that things is going to get better. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to believe that I'm a prophet of doom, mm -hmm. but I want you to know as a man of God, as a prophet of God in the word of God, I'm speaking to what the word of God teaches. And this is what we're experiencing now. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So let us look at another scripture. Mm -hmm. So we look at, at, at Daniel chapter mm -hmm. 2 verses 44 and 45. Look at Daniel 7. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. You have it. Say amen. Mm -hmm. Look at Daniel 7. Daniel chapter 7 mm -hmm. verses 9 to 14. <coughs> Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 to 14. We are in Daniel 7 verses 9 to 14. Praise the Lord. Let us hear what Daniel is saying, saying here, here also. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us hear what Daniel is saying here also. You have it. Say amen. Praise the Lord. I'm seeing some amen there. So it means you're in the Bible. Thank, praise the name of the Lord. We give God praise. So I'm reading from Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 to 14. And, 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 and the prophet Daniel is saying here. And, be, and be, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the ancients of days did set. And the ancients of days did set. Whose garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head were like pure wool. His throne was like the, like the fiery flame. And his wheels as burning fire. And his wheels as burning fire. Verses 10. A fiery stream issued and come forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him. And 10,000 times, 10,000 stood before him. And judgment was set. And judgment was set. And the books were open. So Daniel is talking about something hallelujah, that is going to come in the last days. But somebody, I want you to know that this is going to happen at the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Look at verses 11. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the, which the horn speak. And I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, as concerning the rest of the beast, they had the dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the son of the Son of Man. And I want you to look at that at that verse there. That is verse 30. I saw, Daniel said, in the night visions, and I behold one like the Son of Man come with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancients of days and they brought him near before him. 
and there was given him dominion. And what you look at that. My God, Daniel is talking about the Son, which is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, being brought before the Father, the ancients of days. Hallelujah. And he said here, hallelujah. And there was given unto him dominion and glory and a kingdom. And what you look at that. And a kingdom that all people, nation, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So what we are seeing here, Daniel, hallelujah, is speaking about the second coming of Christ. And the He's saying here that the Son of Man received dominion at that time. My God, I want you to understand when he come the second time. The, 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 hallelujah. Daniel is saying he received dominion and, and, and glory and a kingdom. And a kingdom, hallelujah, that will never be destroyed. And somebody, I want you to know, hallelujah, this is the reason for the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We talk about his second mission to earth, to fulfill, to hallelujah, to, to, to fulfill the plan of the Father or God's purpose and the hallelujah, to reign as king of the whole earth and to put down all rebellion. Praise the Lord. So my God, you hear preachers say over and over that the kingdom of this world is about to become the kingdom of our God. The kingdom of this world is about to become the kingdom of our God. But I want you to understand that all the kingdom and the systems of this world must be brought to nothing, must be destroyed, hallelujah, so that the kingdom and the systems of God can be ushered in, hallelujah. My God, you're hearing, pray, you're hearing, so much. My God, what you're hearing now is the, the, the system of this world. We depend on oil. We depend on oil and the, and, the, and, and the world and the war. Most of the war we have in the world and, and the, the most of the confrontation it is because of oil and who have oil and who should have it and who have more and who don't have. But I want you to understand that oil now is dog cheap on the market. My God, it dropped in the, um, it dropped even lower than 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 one dollar. I think it's about sixty cent. And uh, um, uh, we heard that that it, it 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 is cheaper to give it away than 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 to than than, than to have it stored because most of uh, um storage like um the, in the United States of America where they would have been storing the oil. They and they, they no longer have any space or room for that. But I want you to understand, listen to me somebody, the world right now is troubled. The, trouble. the Bible teaches that man's heart is going to fail them for fear. This is what is happening right now. The system of the world is crumbling. Um, our very economy, um, our very economy, we are dependent on, we are dependent on, on oil. That is our revenue. We are dependent on it. And we are seeing that, that the oil price is not fluctuating but it's decreasing and um, it is decreasing and it is continuing to decrease what is happening i want you to understand listen to me those of you that are out there under the reach of my voice don't believe that things will get better in the world but i want you to understand it is time to look up because our redemption is so is, is nigh our redemption our redemption is nigh and we need to be ready children of god God, get ready to leave this place. I don't know the minute nor the hour, but get ready to leave this place. Praise the Lord. So Jesus, hallelujah, is coming the second time to set up this kingdom that will last forever. Now, if you look at verses 18, come on, look at Daniel. Daniel chapter, we are still in Daniel chapter 2. Daniel, um, Daniel chapter 7, sorry. Daniel chapter 7, look at verses 18. You are still in 7. Daniel chapter 7. Look at verses 18. You just read from 9 to 14. Look at verses 18 of Daniel's. Praise the name of the Lord. Verses 18. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have verses 18, say amen. Praise the Lord. You have verses 18, say amen. 
Praise the Lord. We are looking at verses 18 now. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm reading verses 18. But the saints of the Most High, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. You, you, I, I hope that you're with me in your Bibles. That is Daniel chapter 7, verses 18. Daniel chapter 7, verses 18. We just read verses 9 to 14. We are reading verses 18 now. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. The saints of the Most High, I want you to look at that. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom for how long? Forever. Come on, I want you to look at that word there. Forever, even forever and ever. And you've seen the, the writer here continuing to, to um, and the, the, the writer here continue to, to expound on that forever and ever and ever. Let, let us read it again. The saints of the Most High. And the, who are the saints of the Most High? We are the saints of the Most High. Praise the name of the Lord. We are the saints of God. Praise the Lord. If you are a saint, can, can I see some amen there? If you are a saint, let me see some amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We are the saints of God. But Daniel is saying here, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever, even forever and ever. Even forever and ever. That is in verses 18. Praise the name of the Lord. That is in verses 18. Right? And let's look at also verses 22 of the same chapter. Don't move from that chapter. Verses 22 of the same chapter. So what Daniel is saying here, it is we, the saints of God, will possess. We will possess the kingdom. The kingdom that Jesus is coming to set up. Hallelujah. We will reign with him. We will reign as kings and we will reign as priests. We will possess the kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. We are the one that will inhabit. We are the one that will reign in that kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is what Daniel is saying there. If you look at praise the name of the Lord, you look, look at also um, um, 22. Look at verses 22 of the same chapter. Verses 22 of uh, Daniel chapter 7. Praise the name of the Lord. Verses 22 of Daniel chapter 7. Praise the name of the Lord. Verses 22. You have, you have to say amen. Verses 22 uh, uh, of Daniel chapter 7. Praise the Lord. You have verses 22. Say amen. Praise the Lord. I'm seeing some amen there. Until, now let us, let us read that together. I want us to read that together. Until the ancients of days come and judgment was given unto the saints. Judgment was given unto who? Unto the saints of the Most High. And the time come that the saints possess the kingdom. So judgment was given unto us. The Bible said, we will have, we will be, we will judge the world. Praise the name of the Lord. So my God, this is the reason why you must be counted worthy now to go with Christ in the rapture. Because, hallelujah, my God, you must be counted worthy. You must be qualified. Because how can you be a judge uh, for God, hallelujah, if you're not qualified to sit on the, the throne with Jesus to judge. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that. My God, look at that scripture again. Daniel is saying in chapter 7 and verses 22, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Daniel, he said, until the ancients of days come. The ancients of days. He's talking about the Father here now. And judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time come that the saints, hallelujah, saints, Possess the kingdom, praise the name of the Lord. So we will possess the kingdom because we will reign as kings and priests with him. We ought to be kings and priests now. You ought to be reigning now, praise the name of the Lord. The earnest expectation of the creature is waiting for you to be made manifest so that you, praise the name of the Lord, so that the sons of God will come forth in a time like this when the world is troubled, the world need answers. Praise the name of the Lord. You are the sons of God. Let that light that is in you so shine before men that men may see. 
your good work, hallelujah, and give God the glory. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now it's time for we, the sons of God, to rise up and let the world know, hallelujah, my God, let the world know that there is hope and that hope is only in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, when you study the scripture, you will um, you will observe in the scripture that um, the first, you will see a first and a second coming of God the Father to the earth. And that is something, praise the name of the Lord, that we will discuss at another time. Um, astrology, praise the name of the Lord, teaches it. And it's in the Bible, but we'll discuss the first and the second coming of God the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. We'll discuss that. But we want to praise the name of the Lord. Go um, a little deeper. And I don't want to, you see, when I begin to discuss that now, I will have to divert a bit. Praise the name of the Lord. Because you will see the first coming of the Father, uh, God the Father, will be at the second coming of the, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when Christ will come to the earth. At that time, God will come to help Christ defeat and destroy the Antichrist and his kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. We will see all the scripture. He will then give the kingdom over to the Son. He will then give the kingdom over to the Son, as you saw there in Daniel, and also to the saints of God, as you saw there. You saw Christ and um, will then be king over all the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. That is another, my God, deep discussion in terms of astrology. Praise the name of the Lord. And then we will see that the Father will go back to heaven to remain for the first 1,000 years of the eternal reign of Christ. And until um, Jesus, oh, he has rid the earth of all rebellion. Praise the name of the Lord. So, praise the name of the Lord. So, we will want to look at all those things a little deeper. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we'll look at the second coming when we'll come the second time. And let me just um, give you a little briefing on that too. When the Father will come the second time. Uh, I'm not talking about the Son, Jesus, you know. I'm talking about the, 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 the Father. We know it's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. The Father will also come. And um, the second coming, with, or, 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 or the second coming of the Father um, to earth will be when the end of the millennium, and that is the end of the thousand years reign of Christ and the saints, and at the end of the millennium, when Christ has rid the earth of all rebellion, God will then become all in all on the earth as before rebellion was um, um, as before rebellion was started by Lucifer and uh, later also by Adam, and we will look at all those scripture. And you will see, my God, or you will be able to understand the first and second coming of the Father. Praise the name of the Lord to the earth. But I want to continue to look at the second coming of Christ. Because I don't want to divert too much. Praise the name of the Lord. Maybe on the next study, we can look at the first and the second coming of the Father. And you will look at the sequence of it. Praise the name of the Lord. As we discuss astrology, as we discuss prophecies, praise the name of the Lord. You need it. The world need it. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, we need to understand the plans of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at also verses 27 of Daniel chapter 7. Verses 27 of Daniel chapter 7. Verses 27 of Daniel chapter 7. Praise the name of the Lord. You have it. Say amen. Verses 27 of Daniel chapter 7. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we there? Are you with me tonight? Praise the name of the Lord. Verses 7 of Daniel chapter 7. Praise the Lord. Verses 27 of Daniel chapter 7. Praise the Lord. We have it. Say amen. And the kingdom and dominion. Praise the Lord. And what you look at that there. And the kingdom and dominion. And the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. And, and I want you to look at that. Come on, I want you to look at that and I want you to read with understanding. I want you to please read with understanding. You're out there. We are, let us do some critical reading. Okay? So I would like you to read with understanding. Come on, let us look at that again. And the kingdom and dominion. And the greatness of the kingdom where? And I want you to look at where it is. Under the whole heaven. So that kingdom will not be in heaven. That kingdom will be under the whole heaven. So I want you to look at that 
Read with understanding. Under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. So we are seeing here that Daniel is saying here that that kingdom will be a kingdom under the whole heaven. And when he say under the whole heaven, he's, it means here that that kingdom will be set up on the earth. The kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our God. God is going to renovate this place. And I want you to understand, listen to me somebody, man is powerless to what God can do. And we are seeing it right now. Man have no control of what is happening. Man is studying to chart another way to be able to have a new norm. Not the same norm, but a new norm. Because why? The systems that man have set up for this world, for his kingdom, those systems has failed. So I want you to understand that God is about to set up a kingdom or, a, or systems that will never fail. Hallelujah. So children of God, we got to get ready and be excited about this time. So I want you to look at that again. It shall be under the whole heaven. Come on, I want you to look at that in your scripture. Praise the name of the Lord. If you're seeing that there, say amen. The dominion, come on, let us look at it again. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom shall be under the whole heaven. If you have that, say amen. It shall be under the whole heaven. If you have that, say amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It means praise the name of the Lord. You are in the word of God with me. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Now, we want to go, or, 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 or go even a little further. Look with me in the book of Luke. Luke chapter, Luke chapter 1. Verses 32 to 33. Luke chapter 1, verses 32 to 33. We are in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 32 to 33. Praise the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 1, verses 32 to 33. Praise the Lord. If you haven't said amen. I'm reading from verses 32. He shall be great. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the, the highest. Uh, we, we, we know praise the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. And what are we reading from here? Hallelujah. You are seen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. From verses 32, you have it again. Say amen. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now that is a big one. We need to talk about that. So, so, so and remember that the Bible is talking about Jesus Christ here. And the Bible is saying here that he shall be great. And he shall be called the son of the highest. But there is something that is significant there. The Bible said, And the Lord God, the Father, shall give unto him, Jesus, the throne of his father David. My God, that is a very deep. And we need to understand what that is about. But let us go on to verses 33. We will talk about that. We need to talk about that a little bit so that you will be a little more clear where that is concerned. So look at verses 33. Look at verse 32. And he shall reign, he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there shall be no end. His kingdom, there shall be no end. So, um, the Bible here is referring to when he comes back the second time. But the Bible is saying that when he comes back the second time, the Father, hallelujah, the, the Lord God shall give him, Jesus, the throne of his father David. The throne of his father David. I wonder if we could um, touch um, or, 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 or look at that a, 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 a little more. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I praise the Lord. And he shall be given... 
the throne of his father David. Praise the Lord, you know. And I am looking and um, praise the Lord. The throne of his father David. And I want you, my God, you, you saw that there. He shall be given the throne of his father David. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, if you, and the throne of his father David, we know we are talking about the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but we need to clear up some things here. So look with me, look with me in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 16. Praise the name of the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 16, because David is dead. Uh -uh. Yes, David. So look at 2 Samuel chapter 7, sorry, verses 16. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 16. Because David, David is dead. And the, and the Bible is saying that he will, he will be given, or and Jesus will be given the throne of his father David. But let us see why, the, why Luke, um, why Luke bear witness of, uh, 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 of this, that Jesus will be given, and we want to see where that reference came from. Where is the, that reference in the Bible? And, and look at me in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 16. 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 16. You have it say that. And thine house. And thine house. And thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. And thy throne shall be established forever. So you, 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 you are seeing here, praise the name of the Lord, that the, the kingdom that David ruled over, God had promised, hallelujah, for that kingdom to be established forever. So you are seeing here that that kingdom was supposed to be established forever. Let me, I just want to um, go into something here. Praise the name of the Lord. So, so David's kingdom was always meant to be established forever. But you know, and but if you look at that, and the, the kingdom of David, and God said here, and thine house, which it speaks about, <coughs> David's house there speaks about his generation, generation, genealogy, <coughs> Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Just excuse me a, a little bit. I am I need a little water. <coughs> so God told David there in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 16 that thine house, his house, <coughs> and his kingdom shall be established. So it means his generation and his kingdom, that is David's kingdom, shall be established forever before him. His throne also shall be established forever. So three things are seen here. One, his house established forever, his kingdom established forever, and his throne, it would have been established forever. So you are seeing three things of that would have been established <coughs> forever here. Three things um, God told David would have been established forever. And one is his house. One, the, the other, one is his house. The other is his throne. One is his house. The other is his kingdom. And the other is his throne. Now, I want you to understand, and it's important, we are talking some deep things here tonight, praise the name of the Lord. I want you to know, praise the name of the Lord, that in the millennium kingdom, that the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, <coughs> a little saliva get down in my throat there, and it tickled a bit. The, the, Millennium Kingdom that the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is going to be coming at his second coming to set up on the earth. David also will be a prince in that kingdom. 
You'll see, um, allow me, I just want to put a sweet in my mouth. If it's okay for you, I'm putting a sweet in my mouth. The Millennium Kingdom that the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is about to come the second time, his second advent, to set up on the earth, David, because God had promised David that is thrown and that is that, that is shown and that his kingdom will be forever. And also as it say more is your and also his generation will be forever. God, hallelujah, have promised David and, and David will be a prince in the millennium kingdom. If you look and um, I, I, I want to go there a, a, a little bit and that is um, I want to go there a, a little bit. Um, if you look at, at Jeremiah, look at Jeremiah 30. Go to Jeremiah chapter 30 and verses 9. I told you that David will also rule over all Israel under Christ in the millennium kingdom. kingdom. David and somebody may say, but um, Bishop David, David um, died. I want you to understand, my God, to be absent from this body, we the saints, to be absent from this body, it is to be present with the Lord. And David is going to come back with us when we come back after we have been raptured and we come back with Christ at the second coming. David is going to come back with us to fight that battle of Armageddon, to put down rebellion. And David, he will rule over all Israel under Christ. And I want you to look at me in, 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 in Jeremiah. Look at Jeremiah 30 and verses 9. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verses 9, if you have it, say amen. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verses 9. You have verses 9 of Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30, 3, 0 and verses 9. I'm reading verses 9. But they shall serve the Lord their God. Come on, look at Jeremiah there. They shall serve the Lord their God and David their king whom I will raise up unto them. So they shall serve the Lord their God. They will serve the Lord their God and David their king whom I will raise up unto them. So I said to you that David will rule over all Israel under Christ. Um, yes, under Christ. But David, because God had promised David that his kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom and that his, that his kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom and uh, that his throne will be an everlasting throne. You're seeing here the prophet Jeremiah is prophesying that the Israelites, they will serve the Lord, their God, and David, their king, whom God will raise up unto them. If you look at also Ezekiel, Ezekiel speak about it. Ezekiel 34 verses 24. Look at Ezekiel 34, 24. So when the Bible said that Jesus will receive the throne of his father David, or the kingdom of his father David, um, the Bible is speaking about that millennium kingdom that will be set up, praise the name of the Lord, and David will rule with him, um, praise the Lord. So God is going to bring us back with him, he's going to bring David back with him. We will be kings and priests and we will rule with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but David will have a special um, rank in, in that kingdom. Look at... Um, 24, and um, we, we, Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 24. We are reading 24. You have it, say amen. And I, the Lord, will be their God and my servant David. You are seeing that there? I, the Lord, Ezekiel, God is speaking to Ezekiel about what is going to happen in that millennium kingdom that will be set up on the earth. And the God is saying, 
I, the Lord, you will see capital L-O-R-D, all capital letters. I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. So David, because the promise that God made to David's kingdom, and David, you know, he always, um, hear preachers say that David was a man after God's own heart. And uh, the promise God made to David um, for that his kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom. And that his throne will be an everlasting throne. Praise the name. And his generation will be an everlasting generation. We've seen here um, Ezekiel prophesy. You know, God speaking to the prophet Ezekiel. And God is saying, And I the Lord will be the God. And uh, my servant David will be a prince among them. And uh, I the Lord, I the Lord have spoken it. Praise the Lord. So if you look at also Ezekiel again, Ezekiel 37 verses 34 to verses 24 to 28, Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel 37 verses 24 to 28. Praise the Lord. I told you that David will rule over all Israel under Christ in that millennium kingdom. Or in that kingdom that will crush all other system or all other kingdom of the world, and uh, and uh, the kingdom of the world will become the kingdom of our God. David will have special ranks in that kingdom. Look at um um Ezekiel chapter. Praise the name of the Lord. We, I'm excited. I'm excited. Hallelujah for those times. Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 24. Ezekiel, sorry, chapter 37, verses 24 to 28. We are, I'm sorry for that. Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 24 to 28. Praise the Lord. I'm reading from verses 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And I want you to understand these prophecies, David is already dead. But I want you to understand that these prophecies, it is speaking to something that will happen, that will come to pass. These prophecies um, are not fulfilled as yet. These prophecies will be fulfilled in the millennium kingdom. It will be fulfilled in the, in, 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 in the kingdom that will be set up on this earth. So let us look at it again. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgment and observe my statues and do them. Not as the Israel before. It will be a new thing. It will be a now, my God, it will be now a people as the Bible teaches, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Verses 25. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children, children for how long? And you will see the word there forever and forever more coming up. And they will dwell there forever. Now, remember, all of Israel, or all who was under David before, they, they are dead. But the Bible cannot be speaking about that time because the Bible is saying here that they will dwell there forever. So there will be a contradiction. But my God, this is a future prophecy. And it's not one that it is not one that happened when David was alive in the flesh. This is something that is going to happen in the kingdom of God. So they and and, and their children forever. And my servant, and I want you to look at that in verses 25. And my servant David shall be the prince forever. How David shall be the prince forever. David is dead. David it was in the flesh. David died. David right now is in the presence of the Lord. But David will be the prince forever. When? It is a prophecy. It is a future prophecy. And that prophecy, it is for when the kingdom of this world become the kingdom of all God. Look at, at, at verses, um, I told you we are reading up to 
and and this is um um I told you that we're reading up to verses twenty eight. So let us look at verses twenty six. Moreover. I will make a covenant of peace with them. So it, 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 it could not have been in David's time. It is, uh, God said, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting. It, 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 David, David first kingdom in the flesh, it was, uh, my God, it, it, it did not, it, my God, it, it, it lasts for a period of time. David is dead and that kingdom would have been destroyed. But I want you to understand, hallelujah, that God has promised that it will be everlasting. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So, so, so you're seeing it. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place, and I will place them and multiply them. And I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. So as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. So God is saying here, after my son Jesus... Get rid of all rebellion and sin is being removed. Sin that have separated me from man and the, and the millennium kingdom will take care of that. The millennium reign is for that, to get rid of rebellion. And Lucifer is being now and cast into the lake of fire. And all sin have been rid of, all sin is being rid of. Then God is saying, I will be in the midst of them forevermore. Where God will now be all in all with man. As it was in the beginning when God used to come down and sit with Adam and Eve and, and, and reminisce with them. My God, it was always God's it was always God's intention to have fellowship with man. So it means, my God, the time is going to come when God will be in our midst and have fellowship with us. Not, my God, yes, praise the name of the Lord. We know right now, hallelujah, we, God inhabits in the praises of his people. But I want you to know that a time is going to come literally when God, we will be seeing God face to face. Praise the Lord. That time is going to come. Look at verses 27. Um, verses 27 of Ezekiel chapter 37. Verses 27. Verses 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. And that is where we see New Jerusalem coming down and being set up on the earth. We will discuss all of that. That is eschatology. We'll go deep into those things another time. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do it, sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them for how long? Forevermore. Forevermore. It means that, my God, this will not be a temporary thing. And when I say this will not be a temporary thing, we saw the very, the very, um, the very tabernacle that was built in the wilderness when God told Moses, build me a sanctuary that I may dwell among my people. And he told him, let the people camp around that sanctuary. I must be in the center of the sanctuary. And I want to be with my people. I want to dwell among them. That was temporary. We see all the other temples that was built. Solomon Temple was destroyed. It was temporary. We see Herod Temple. It was destroyed. It was temporary. We saw, my God, we know right now that the temple of God now is us. We are the temple of God and God lives in us. That is also temporary. Because, my God, it is appointed unto us once to die. So this temple that is God's temple, it will die. Someday we have to die. My God, as long as Jesus tarry, we will die. So the very temple that we are now of God, this temple is temporary. But I want you to understand the objective or the plan of God is a permanent tabernacle where God will dwell among man. Praise the Lord. So my God, this is the reason why the Bible teaches that hallelujah. 
that the building that we have with God is not a building made with the hands of man, but we have a body with God, a heavenly body, praise the name of the Lord, where we'll be able to deal with God in that celestial body. For the Bible said, we shall see him because we shall be like him. Our bodies will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed from mortality to immortality. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. My God, we have so much to talk about tonight, but I want to touch one more scripture. Praise the name of the Lord because of time. And we are looking at David's kingdom, an everlasting kingdom, and David will rule over all Israel under Christ. David will have special ranks in the kingdom that is about to be set up on the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at also Jose, Jose, Hosea. Hosea, um, Hosea chapter, Hosea chapter 3 and verses 4, verses 4 and 5, we read verses 4 and 5, that is our last scripture verse, praise the name of the Lord, there is so much I want to go into with you, but we will have to continue on the next study, we will take up from what we left off, because we have a lot to discuss folks, I wish we had a whole day where we could have just got a little break and we come back in the word of God. I know that we are all lucky in our homes and God has given us this opportunity that we can really get down into studying the word of God. I'm so excited about all that is happening. I'm so excited about what is about to happen. Praise the name of the Lord. And I know and hope that you are all so excited. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are looking at David will rule over all Israel under Christ in the the millennium kingdom or in the kingdom that God is about to set up upon the earth, that everlasting kingdom that will not be destroyed. Look at um, Hosea chapter 3 and verses 4. Praise the Lord. You have it say, man. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephraim. And without and without a, a teraphim. Afterwards, and I want you to look at and I want you to look at verses five. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God. Afterwards, and I want you to understand, listen to me, after right now, and it's important to understand what the Bible is saying. Now the children of Israel, what we see it is that Jesus said he came to his own. And his own receive him not. But a time is going to come. And I want you to understand. We will, we will discuss that. Because I'll teach on that. The tribulation period. That seven years tribulation. Was designed. To bring the children of Israel. Back to God. Right now what is happening. We know that the children of Israel. They never accepted Jesus as the Messiah. We have, um, we, we have a, a lot of Jews who accepted him. We have a lot of Jews and, and rabbis um, that accepted him and, and, and uh, they, as you say, more or less, are my mentors and, and I learned from them. Praise the name of the Lord. But the Bible, Jesus said, I came to my own and my own received him. There is a lot of Jews that don't believe that the Jesus the Christ that we serve right now was the Messiah, was the Son of God. And uh, praise the name of the Lord. The tribulation was meant to bring their hearts back to God. And we will discuss that, the tribulation. Tribulation is not for the church. The tribulation that we are going through now, it is the, uh, uh, yes, we, are, we may go through, as you say, more or less, um, tribulations and, and the, 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 the um, big pangs that we are going through. But the great tribulation is not for the church, right? We will be counted worthy to escape. God never meant for us to go through that great tribulation. The church will be taken away before that great tribulation. But look at verses 5. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. And I want you to see there, in the latter days. Why do I say in the latter days? Come on, I want you to look at that there. That will happen in the latter days. So the children 
of Israel, their hearts will be turned back to God that is after Christ comes the second time. And they see the greatness of it. And I want you to understand, listen to me. And that is going to happen even just before, just before the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ return the second time. And the Bible teaches that God is going to send the two witnesses who will witness unto the children of Israel and, and bring back their hearts to God. Yes, at the, the beginning, they will accept the Antichrist and, and they will accept him and, as someone who is able to bring stability to the, 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 the systems of the world. But when he set up himself in the kingdom of God as God, they will then rise up against him and you will have the two witnesses that God is going to send and uh, we, we will discuss that a little more and we want to discuss who are those two witnesses a bit. Praise the name of the Lord. And these two witnesses will help to turn the hearts of, of the turn of Israel back to God. But as the Bible said, that they will have to die and they will die in the streets of Jerusalem. And the Bible said that they were transported up or they were raptured up to the heavens. Praise the name of the Lord. And the children of Israel, and I want you to note that God is a God of promise. He's a God of purpose. God of promise Abraham that in all the earth a seed will be blessed. So God is going to make sure that 144,000 of those Jews are sealed even in the midst of the great tribulation because God is a God that will keep promises even unto a thousand generations. So God will make sure that 144,000 Jews, 12,000 from each of the tribe of Israel and the day will be sealed and the day will be protected because God is going to keep promises even as God has promised Abram. Praise the name of the Lord. God is going to make sure that these 144,000 Jews, that they make it even in that time of the great tribulation. So believers, we have much to discuss. We have much more to talk about as we get ourselves ready for the rapture of the church and as we look forward to after the rapture of the church, which is approximately seven years after the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with we the saints um, with him. Now we will talk about that a little more. Um, we the saints with him. Praise the name of the Lord. We will discuss that um, on our other Bible studies. Tonight I give God praise and thanks for you. And I hope that you are blessed tonight. I really hope that you receive tonight as we discuss the rapture of the church and the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we discuss some deep things, I'm hoping that um, some of you that you are ready for these deep things. Um, we, um, for those of you who don't know us from the New Creation Ministries, um, we believe in strong meat. Um, we believe that the church has grown for thousands of years and now is not time to feed the church with sincere milk. Now it's time to feed the church with strong meat because Jesus is about to come and the church have to rise up and uh, declare that sonship that God has uh, called them unto and the only way that this can happen it is if they grow in the word of God. So tonight, for those of you that are out there under the reach of my voice, we are giving you scripture verses. Look up the scripture verse. Do your own studies home. I um, want you for your assignments. Read some of the things that um, or the scriptures that I give to you. I also um, want you to be studying the um, studies that we have on going on um, the, my Facebook profile and also on your chat. Um, that is Bible Studies with Bishop Carl St. Rose. You have a lot to read. Please study with your Bibles. Don't just read 
what Bishop St. Rose put there and, 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 and accept it as um, a biblical truth. But please, study with your Bible. Study with your Bibles. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tonight I give God praise and thanks for you. Praise the Lord. Excuse my bad behavior, my coughing. My wife gave to me a sweet and that is what helping me right now. Um, I put a sweet in my mouth and it's really helping me a lot. So um, it, um, I feel a lot better. Um, I give God praise and thanks again for each of you. I want to admonish you. Let us continue to watch one for the other in this time. Know that we ought to be our brother's keeper. Um, for use those believers, um, new believers of New Christian Ministry, I said to you on Sunday, um, I will be so disappointed if um, any one of the brethren um, is in a position where they have nothing to eat home um, in time like these and they did not um, bring it to our attention. I want you to be watching out for the brethren um, of the church and make sure that everybody have and something uh, to eat when the day come that they have food on their table, right? And please be watching out for the brethren and uh, please let me know um, what is happening out there. I cannot be um, all the places at the same time. I am in contact with most of the folks. Um, we also have one or two folks that we um, have arranged some hampers and we'll be handing out those hampers also by tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be um, handing out some hampers to folks um, um, uh, who we believe that is necessary that we hand hampers to them whether they told us that they need it or not. Um, I thank God for um, um, that level of vigilance and uh, in terms that we could reach out to that brother, that sister um, um, without they having to reach out to us. Um, so tomorrow we will be dropping off one or two of those hampers. I would have called some folks already in New yourself, so you can expect um, that we will be coming to you. Don't leave your home to come to us, please. Um, we will come to you. Um, we'll try and make sure at all times, um, keep safe, right? Watch out for the family. Every family member, please watch out for them. Make sure that you uh, maintain the you, 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 uh, you um, acknowledge the rules, um, your face mask, washing your hands, washing your face, and uh, um, making sure that you watch out for the most vulnerable that is among you. Praise the Lord. Tonight I give God praise and thanks to you again. I hope that you are blessed by the studies on tonight. And we have so much more that we like to discuss from the word. Tonight I could not uh, um, do much because it's only one hour that we have. But I thank God for the opportunity that I could have still um, at least get in some. Praise the Lord. God bless you tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. And I just want you to stretch your hands. Father in heaven, we thy servant come before you. Praise the name of the Lord. And Father, we declare right now, O oh God, your anointing and your strength. And powerful God, we thank you for victory. We declare, dear Lord, O oh God, Father, your will be done in your people. May the grace of our God and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit continue to rest, remain and abide with us, both now and forever. And everybody say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Love you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. <laughs>